Well, my name's John Andrews and I come from the East End of Glasgow. I lost my bill, I ended up with toxic shock, major organ failure and peritonitis. That's a funny thing. Uh, I was dying to get home. I couldn't wait. I'd have, I'd have walked it if I could have, but I couldn't because I couldn't walk. I was ready to go home physically, but I don't think I was right mentally because I got home on the Friday and on Sunday my family were all doing and my granddaughter came in and she, when she seen me, she started crying. She ran behind her dad, my son. Who is that? So that was quite upsetting. But... I remember getting, I was lying in my room, the door shut and I could hear all the family in the kitchen. And next thing I just felt so low and I actually was burst into tears. And uh, I, wanted to be, I wanted to be back in my bed in that ward because I felt safe there. This day I was out walking and I said, what happened? Why am I here? Because I was told that when I read the papers, when I got out, that's the first I'd seen what had happened to me. When I got home, when I read the papers, and the toxic shock, I can kill you. Septicemia, well, peritonitis, I can kill you. Major organ failure, my kidneys were gone. And here I'm walking the streets, and it just, boom, just hit me like a sledgehammer. You know, and, and then it started, why am I here? Why did I survive this when other people don't die? And I couldn't handle it. And uh, I went home, taken to my bed, and I taken to my bed for a long time. I could have spoke to maybe a doctor or somebody, but I couldn't tell my wife because they'd been through enough. I felt guilty for my wife, my children, and my grandchildren. What have I done to them? So I put the blame on it myself, and I carried this about me till I went to Inspire. And when I walked in, Tara, I'll never forget any of them, Dr. John, uh, Professor John Kinsella, Tara, Joanne, Helen, uh, Stephen, Pamela, the pharmacist, they're all telling me, no, I'm not Professor John Kinsella, I'm John. How are you doing, John? So I'm sitting here, a boy from the East End of Glasgow, and I'm speaking to professors, ICU doctors, nurses, with their first names. That's uncommon for me. I went for the five weeks, but I didn't want to go the first day. I wanted to, that's the last place I wanted to be was here, but I stuck in. And gradually, over the five weeks, I'm talking to doctors. How you doing, Tara? All right, John. How you doing, John? This is Professor John Kinsella. What's your hobbies, John? I said, I like fishing, I like fly fishing. And they were talking away like that. It was just, it gave me a, that these people are human. They're just like us, only. They're doctors. Yeah. I feel there was a lack of communication. Uh, my family were coming up and didn't know that I had toxic shock. And I was hallucinating. I was seeing all sorts of different things and I didn't know at the time that it was a toxic shock. So my family didn't know and my boy at one time asked uh, one of the surgeons, the doctors, if there was any brain damage because this was the toxic shock. And uh, But my family were only told that and it's just that I think it's just there is a lack of communication. Well, I was in my bed and I'd been moved for the ICU up and I had three bags on, I done it, a colostomy, an ileostomy, and a bag for the drain all the debris out my chest area. And the doctor came in, detained a biopsy of the bag on my chest away, and the doctor came in the next morning and told me it was clear. So there was only four years in this wee ward, and they were cheering, and the nurses were cheering, and but he came back the next day, and I see them coming heading straight for me, and I knew that something was wrong and he told me they'd made a mistake. That was clear, but it wasn't that they were really concerned about. It was this, the bill. But, you know, I just looked at this. these things happen. Being in the intensive care unit, I thought this was going to be me anyhow, because I never knew that your catheter comes out. 
I thought this is it for life. I've got this thing, this bag. I'm gonna be waiting to leave my bed to the nurse, uh, Margaret, said to me one night, I said, Margaret, this is, I'm going to have this for the rest of my life. I didn't know. And she said, John, as soon as you can walk to that toilet, I'll take that out. So that night, I decided, right, this is it. And I got up and I struggled. It was like walking up Ben Nevis, but I got into that toilet and it was only next to my bed. And Margaret shouted, oh, John, where are you? And I said, I'm in the toilet. How did you? I said, I walked in. And I'm coming out. And when I come out, she says, right, I'll take that catheter out tonight at 12 o'clock. And sure I would. She put the curtain around, taking the catheter out. And that was me. That was one bag away. As I said before, that this Glasgow Royal Infirmary saved my life. I wouldn't be here now. Uh, if I wouldn't get in when I got in, I'd have died that night in my bed. And I'm, I'll always be grateful to the surgeons, Dr McKee, her team, uh, nurses, right down, everybody down the line. Uh, I've been, you know, as I said, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for them.